The Carolina Panthers have begun conducting and setting up second interviews in search of a new general manager and head coach. Has a favorite emerged on the head coaching end? We'll talk about it right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me. Julian Council on Twitter at Julian Council, where on Fridays throughout the offseason, I'll be answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions either at me or DM me to get your questions in for this week's edition of the weekly Friday mailbag right here on Locked on Panthers. Today's episode of Locked on Panthers is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on nfl that's linkedin.com slash locked on nfl to post your job for free terms and conditions apply all right we are here the second or really the third full week of the head coaching search here in carolina and across the nfl and starting this week the carolina panthers among other teams out there in the nfl can start speaking to head coaching candidates in person the Carolina Panthers will do just that as they have already scheduled an interview with Brian Callahan the Bengals offensive coordinator who interviewed for the first time virtually last week on the 18th the Carolina Panthers have also spoke to Dave Canales Buccaneers offense coordinator um, via virtual interview back on the 18th as well they've spoken to a Jero Farrell the D.C. here in Carolina on the 11th, Ben Johnson, the Lions offense coordinator on the 19th. They spoke to Mike McDonald and Todd Munkin, the Ravens defensive and offense coordinators, respectively, both on the 11th, where he Morris, the former Bucks head coach, currently the Rams defensive coordinator, interviewed here virtually on the 17th. Also spoke to Dan Quinn, the Cowboys defensive coordinator, former Falcons head coach on the 17th as well. Bobby Sloat, the Texans offense coordinator free after losing that game on Saturday to interview wherever in person for a second time. He interviewed virtually on the 18th. They spoke to Frank Smith, the Dolphins offense coordinator, who's also free to interview whenever second time around in person. They interviewed him on the 16th. Chris Tabor, the Panthers current interim head coach and special teams coordinator interviewed here on the 10th. And they have requested to speak to Brian Johnson, the Eagles offense coordinator, who is yet to interview here in Carolina. But again, co- according to Tom Paris Pelissero of the NFL Network, the Carolina Panthers are set to interview Brian Callahan, the Cincinnati Bengals offensive coordinator. He is considered to be a hot candidate emerging now as both the Titans and the Falcons also want to speak to Callahan for a second time this week in person. It will be interesting to see how that works out down in Atlanta. They've already spoken to Bill Belichick for a second time. They've spoken to Jim Harbaugh, or at least they plan to speak to Jim Harbaugh. For a second time, Arthur Blank is aggressive in trying to find a head coach that can get the Falcons to stop being, well, you know, the Atlanta Falcons. But the Carolina Panthers, they, of course, have their own issues to worry about as far as finding a head coach. And it seems right now, Brian Callahan is emerging as one of the top candidates. Once you start to see who the guys are going to interview the second time around, that's when we can really start to put together a list of finalists here in Carolina. And it appears that Brian Callahan is going to be on that list. So who is Brian Callahan? I had someone ask me this in my DMs when Callahan was first um, requested to be interviewed here in Carolina, and they sent me a screenshot of the blurb from Panthers.com, and I told them, well, that pretty much answers your question right there. He's the son of Bill Callahan, the offensive line coach. I can't, I don't know where he's at right now in the NFL, but it's potential. It's a possibility, rather. I think he's actually up in Cleveland. It's a possibility that maybe Bill comes work for his son, and he's always been an outstanding offensive line coach. My first understanding of Bill Callahan was back when he used to coach at the University of Nebraska, and his quarterback at the time was Zach Taylor, who now is the head coach and the boss um, of Brian Callahan up there in Cincinnati with the Bengals. So it'll be interesting to see. 
Brian Callahan, who has a background for a very long time being a son of a respected coach in Bill Callahan, who's also been the Raiders head coach here in the NFL and has bounced around the league as an offense coordinator, as an offensive line coach. Good pedigree there, no matter how you feel about Bill, Bill Callahan, if you have any sort of strong feelings about Bill Callahan. Interesting video that Tom Pelissero put out there about Brian Callahan, actually from a year ago when it was late. In the search where a team started to, to talk to Lou Anaruma, who's the defense coordinator there in Cincinnati, and Brian Callahan, of course, the OC there up in Cincinnati. And both of them, of course, stayed for another year. Possibly uh, they could both stay up there for another year. Anaruma has not been requested to interview anywhere as a head coaching candidate. Callahan has multiple second interviews, and it's possible and maybe even likely that he ends up being a head coach, whether it be here in Carolina or somewhere else. But those guys weren't called upon until very late in the process a year ago, and there was a great video feature that Tom Pelissero NFL Network did on Brian Callahan that actually had a quote from Peyton Manning at Super Bowl Media Day back to Super Bowl 50, which we understand Carolina Panthers lost. Thank you, Mike Rimmers, for single-handedly losing that game that afternoon um, or evening, however you want to look at it. Brian Callahan was someone that Peyton Manning said really helped him out that year in Denver. And, you know, Peyton dealt with the injuries that year. Had them at Brock Osweiler in there for a period of time. But still, Peyton was good enough to help him win the Super Bowl on that day. And Brian Callahan certainly helped him out. He said that Brian Callahan was soon to be an offense coordinator and head coach in this league. So that is very high praise from Peyton. You just look at what Joe Burrow has been able to do. And I'm of the opinion that Joe Burrow is a stud and did not. Situation, of course, matters. And no one looked at Cincinnati as being a great situation considering the ownership and their reputation up there in Cincy. But still, I looked at Joe Burrow as a guy that was going to be a stud really no matter where he went. And that has, of course, played out up there in Cincinnati. Again, an organization that a lot of people didn't look at as one of those top organizations in the NFL. You have to give credit to Brian Callahan and to Zach Taylor and that entire offensive staff for getting the best out of Joe Burrow. And really look at this year. With Burrow out with the wrist injury, what they were able to do with Jake Browning. Jake Browning was a really good player at the University of Washington his sophomore year, back when they went to the playoff, I believe, in 2016. Heisman Trophy finalist. Then after that, really fell off. So I'm surprised to see him in the NFL getting a starting opportunity and playing as well as he did where the Bengals were still in the playoff picture. So looking at what that he's done with Joe Burrow, looking at really what he was able to do this past year with Jake Browning, the high praise from Peyton Manning, the NFL pedigree with his dad being Bill Callahan, and being the longest tenured office quarter right now in the NFL, five seasons, Brian Callahan feels like a pretty solid candidate. Last week, ESPN.com, they were trying to project where certain coaches were going to land. They said it was difficult to project who Carolina was going to take, just knowing the difficulties of the job and that candidates who are going to interview in Carolina are going to probably have options other places. We're looking at Dan Quinn. We're looking at a guy, of course, in Ben Johnson. And they felt like Brian Callahan would be the answer potentially here in Carolina. I'm interested to see how this moves forward to Brian Callahan. I'm going to probably find someone to talk to as we continue to figure out who's going to get second interviews here in Carolina and understand more about those prospects. But right now, it looks like Brian Callahan is emerging early on as one of the leaders for the Carolina Panthers head coaching job. And I, I don't hate it. He's already worked with the young quarterback in Joe Burrow, had success with him. Joe Burrow, as we know, was the number one overall pick, was a Heisman Trophy winner. A lot of the same success that Bryce Young had in college, minus the national championship. At least Bryce has, of course, played on that stage. He's won the SEC as well. That would make sense to have someone like Brian Callahan come in here. Now, it's important, though. I don't think Brian Callahan's interviewing for a second time if he does not believe in Bryce Young. and does not believe he can get the most out of Bryce Young. And, of course, when you're looking at the head coaching side of things, that is exactly what you're looking for in a head coaching candidate, whether they are the play caller or they're an offensive coach or not. We just saw what D'Amico Ryan's was able to do down there in Houston. Now, Bobby Sloak's going to get all the credit because that's how this thing works, apparently. Maybe give D'Amico Ryan's credit for hiring Bobby Sloak in the first place and creating an infrastructure there that was ready-made for a quarterback to step in and have success and get to the divisional round in the playoffs, something that the Carolina Panthers thought potentially they could have done this past year with Frank Reich and the all-star coaching staff of Bryce Young as their quarterback. That was not the case. Brian Callahan going to interview here for a second time this week in Carolina. We'll see who the other candidates are. I know a lot of people are hoping it would be Ben Johnson. Frank Smith will make sense. Um, 
Like McDonald, the Ravens defense looked really good. I'm interested in seeing that potentially happen here in Carolina. So right now, we're waiting to see some more candidates. We do know that Brian Callahan, he is early on looking at somebody who's going to be uh, potentially a finalist here in Carolina as he's going to interview for a second time here in Carolina, uh, along with the Falcons and the Titans this week as second as not even just second interviews, but in-person interviews for head coaching candidates are beginning this week in the NFL. The Carolina Panthers have already begun their second interviews with general manager candidates, and they've done that quietly. A couple of names have emerged, including an in-house name, and I'm wondering, should Dan Morgan really be up for the job here in Carolina, considering how bad the roster is? We'll talk about that here in just a moment on Locked on Panthers. At the start of the new year, every small business owner is asking themselves the same question. What's the one move I can make that'll take my business to the next level in 2024? LinkedIn Jobs knows your success all depends on the team you surround yourself with. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when they have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86 Six percent of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. Thankfully of LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. The Carolina Panthers are setting up second interviews for their head coaching candidates this week. They've already gone about interviewing some general manager candidates for a second time this past week. Jonathan Jones, CBS Sports NFL Insider, tweeting out this past week, and the Panthers have quietly entered their second round of interviews for their next general manager. Sources tell CBS Sports current assistant GM Dan Morgan went into the process as a strong candidate for the role, reviewing the candidates, Brandon Brown, he is the Giants assistant general manager he interviewed back on the 13th. Mike Disner, the Lions COO, has actually withdrawn from consideration for the job. More on that here in just a moment. Ed Dodds, the Colts assistant general manager, interviewed here back in 21. He interviewed on the 14th of this month. Mike Greenberg, the Bucks assistant general manager, has been requested, but there is no information on him having interviewed at this point in time. Alec Hallaby, the Eagles assistant general manager, interviewed on the 12th. Kai Harley, the Saints vice president of football administration, interviewed at some point last week. Champ Kelly, the Raiders interim general manager, interviewed on the 11th. Important to note that the Raiders have hired their interim head coach, uh, Antonio Pierce as their full-time head coach. Maybe Champ Kelly will partner there with Pierce. We'll see. Nick Mateo, the Ravens vice president of football administration, interviewed on the 15th. Dan Morgan, of course, Panthers assistant general manager, is interviewed here once and now twice. Samir Suleiman, the Panthers VP of football administration, has been reported to be interviewing at some point in time, but there is not a distinct point in time when that has actually occurred. Then Brent Tillis, the Chiefs Vice President of Football Operations, interviewed on the 15th. So again, Panthers have quietly entered the second round of interviews, and Tom Pelissero actually has a list of names. The Panthers had second interviews this week with multiple general manager candidates, including Giants assistant general manager Brandon Brown and the Eagles assistant GM Alec Hallaby, per sources. Carolina assistant Dan Morgan also is in the mix as the process moves forward. So Brandon Brown, the Eagles assistant general manager, we have, sorry, he is the Giants assistant general manager, Brandon Brown, the Eagles assistant general manager, Alec Hallaby, and the Panthers assistant general manager, Dan Morgan, all have interviewed for a second time for the Panthers GM job. Brown was a key piece to the, the Giants, two NFC East teams trying not to get him confused. Brandon Brown was a key piece in helping the Giants turn things around that first year with, what's his name, Brian Dable, where they went to the playoffs, Daniel Jones as their quarterback this past season, as we saw, wasn't as great. But still, Brandon Brown's got an opportunity to interview other places, clearly highly thought of. Alec Hallaby, 
with the Eagles. They are an organization that's one of the best in the NFL. We know they had that massive breakdown after starting off season 10 and one. I think that's probably more of a coaching issue than a actual personnel issue. That would make a lot of sense. He has a contract background. That's something that Samir Suleiman has, which makes you kind of think that's why Samir Suleiman probably has not interviewed at this point in time. That would make sense for the Carolina Panthers to get someone like him and then maybe even partner him with Dan Morgan if that's what they want to do. But seeing that Dan Morgan is making it this far into the process, he may not be a part of this organization moving forward if he does not get the job. But should he even get the job in the first place? Dan Morgan was hired back on May 8th of 2021, about a month, not even a month, a week after the draft with the Carolina Panthers drafted 11 players, Scott Fitter made four trades that evening on that day too. He went out there and drafted JC Horn. He drafted Tommy Trimble, drafted Terrace Marshall, went on drafted guys like Keith Taylor, who's no longer here in Carolina. You have to think about what Davion Nixon. He's no longer in Carolina. So many players that were drafted that night, that weekend are no longer here in Carolina. That was the beginning of, Really, the issues that we had. People were excited about the way that Scott Fitter moved around the board on that second night. I was one of them. I was impressed by what he did because we have not seen a general manager really maneuver the draft board like that going into the draft, knowing that they wanted to get more picks going in, I believe, with six and leaving with 11. Something that we kind of would like to see here in Carolina this spring as Panthers are certainly in need of more draft picks, just more draft compensation to use in ability to move to get some players like a what number one wide receiver or just to have those assets just to go out there and actually take some younger cheaper players who hopefully can fit in seamlessly and be starters and long-term players here down the road in Carolina but Dan Morgan came about a week after that and you look at some of the moves Panthers have made the last two off seasons you have to wonder what role Dan Morgan played in those decisions, the Carolina Panthers have one of the ro worst rosters, if not the worst roster in the NFL. They just went two and 15. And I think David Tepper and a lot of people have ask themselves, does it really make sense to elevate someone who was already in the building for the construction of the worst team in the NFL this past season? I understand that Dan Morgan may be a favorite. Well, among the people that work here in Charlotte, he may be a favorite among the fan base when you think back to what he was able to do on the field. But Dan Morgan, he ain't coaching linebackers. He's not trying to be the head coach in Carolina. He's trying to handle personnel, and he's been the assistant GM to the man who has made some extremely questionable draft decisions and trades and signings. And that's not all on Scott Fitter, as we have talked about at length over the last year plus, but still the Panthers are in this situation because Scott Bitterer didn't do a good, good enough job. And I'm sure the owner has, of course, played a role in all of that as well in the product on the field. But Scott Bitterer is the one who had to be blamed for it, or at least was part of the people blamed for that, as there's others like Frank Reich and some of the other coaches that have gone out the door the last couple of months because this team finished 2-15 and 15 or was on their way to finishing 2-15. and 15. But why is Dan Morgan even up for the job? That's just, it doesn't really jive with me for someone to be that significant of a player within your front office, your personnel department, and for the personnel to be this bad and for that person to be in this position, getting or already having a second interview, especially when you look at the other candidates, they're one of them, Halaby, is coming from an organization that was in the Super Bowl last year. And that's been in the playoffs the last three years. And that has won a Super Bowl not that long ago. And it's really the Eagles are consistently a playoff team. Whether it's been Sirianni as their head coach or it has been Doug Peterson before that, all the years of Andy Reid, the Eagles are a solid organization under owner Jeffrey Lurie. You can't necessarily always say that about the Giants of late. Now, their ownership's been fine. The Mara family's been fine over the years. They've had success, of course, with Eli Manning when he was there, Tom Coughlin, but the Ben McAdoo hire, the way things have worked out so far, Dable after one big year. I mean, Joe Judge, there's some questions there. At least Brandon Brown has been part of a winning organization as far as going to the playoffs far more recently than Dan Morgan has. And it's possible that Dan Morgan stops in Seattle than going up to Buffalo with Brandon Bean. He has different ideas and David Tepper would understand more about what Dan Morgan is contributing to the organization than I would, that you would and a lot of anyone reporting on the team really would have. But the optics of it all, it doesn't really match with the Panthers likely just needing to clean house. You want to clean the entire offensive side of the ball. Be getting rid of those coaches. Coaches, uh, you look get rid right of Scott Bitterer, 
it just feels like the entirety of the personnel department just needs to be wiped away and bring in new people and not keep the status quo. Because the status quo has led you to winning 14 games the last three seasons with Scott Fitter as a GM and Dan Morgan here as the assistant general manager. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. We'll see what becomes of it as Dan Morgan has interviewed for a second time. It appears to be one of the favorites to get the job here in Carolina as the next Panthers GM. Now, one of those general manager candidates has withdrawn his name from the search. When speaking to Mike K, the Charlotte Observer, he sounded like a perfect candidate for an SVP of football operations job. So is David Tupper not going to do that after all? We'll talk about that here in just a moment on Locked on Panthers. The NFL regular season has wrapped up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. Championship weekend is coming up on Sunday. Cannot wait to find out who will be there in the Super Bowl down in Las Vegas. College basketball is heating up as well here as we're entering into February next week. You also have so much going on with the NBA, NHL, so many sports to bet on. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live, same game, parlays, find bets in the new Explore tab, make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and so much more. So visit FanDuel dot com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup bandle official partner of the nfl as the carolina panthers were beginning their search for a new general manager there's a report from joe person of the athletic about david tepper having an appetite for potentially a go-between having a senior vice president of football operations to be Really, the person that reports to David Tepper and the person that could oversee the rest of the head coach and general manager search and really be a buffer. So we know David Tepper and the biggest issue here in Carolina is him and the whole meddling with the organization and everything that's gone on and having all of his input into his, these decisions, which he has every right to do. He spent $2.25 billion liquid, but as we've understood and seen so far, that has not led to the team winning at all. And in fact, it led to the Panthers being one of the worst professional sports team here in North America. When you are in the conversation with the New York Jets and the Detroit Pistons, that is not where you want to be. You can at least point to a history where the Pistons have won NBA championships. You can even point to the Jets having won a Super Bowl. Unfortunately, here in Carolina, still a very young franchise. You cannot say that up to this point in time. And with David Tepper owning the team, and the way he's gone about his business it does not feel like that is going to happen anytime soon. So I was encouraged by the report that David Tepper was interested in speaking to somebody potentially to be a senior vice president because I felt like that would make the most sense. Go out there, hire someone who has a background within the NFL, a ton of connections, and then let that person go out there, get a GM, get a head coach, and have everybody uh, under the same you know tree and understanding what's happening here. And also have that one person be a buffer and prevent the weekly Tuesday meetings with the head coach and not having the general manager have to sit there and have to speak to the head coach all the time, I just or the general manager all the time, or the owner, rather, David Tepper, all the time. That made a lot of sense to me. But according to NFL Network insider Tom Pelissero, Detroit Lions COO Mike Disner has withdrawn from Carolina search for a new general manager. The Panthers reportedly requested to interview Disner for the vacancy back on January 10th, and he Never did interview. So he's opting to stay in Detroit second year in a row. A Detroit Lions staffer last year, Ben Johnson. This year, Mike Disner have opted to not even interview in Carolina and to stay there in Detroit. Now, the Lions got a big win last Sunday. I'm recording this before. We're actually, their game just kicked off. Uh, but I don't know the result of the game. Good things are going on there in Detroit. And when I spoke to Mike Kay of Charlotte Observer, I had asked him about potentially having that SVP and whether he felt like that would be something that could happen in Carolina. And he said back to me, why else would you interview a guy or request to interview a guy like Mike Disner? And it's possible Disner was approached about the SVP job and was not necessarily interested in it, or maybe he just wanted to be GM. I don't know what the deal uh, was with that, but he's not going to interview and he's the person that made the most sense. Now it's possible that Al Calabi or Brandon Brown are coming to Carolina and they could end up being in that role. And then Dan Morgan could be the general manager. You cannot 
rule it out at this point in time. But the one obvious candidate for it, if if it really was that obvious, would have been Mike Disner. So I'm a little concerned. And I'm not sitting here ready to bury David Tepper because Mike Disner doesn't want to talk here. It, it just may not have been the right fit for him, may not have been the right fit for the Panthers. The Panthers even get to talk to him. So who, who knows what the deal was with that. But that would have said a lot, and it could still happen. I'm not going to say it's not going to happen. It could still happen where they hire a senior vice president of football administrations, oversee everything on that side of the, of the organization, and for David Tepper to not be as hands-on. And if that does happen, I think that's the best thing for the Carolina Panthers. If it does not happen, then it's going to continue my skepticism of things really changing in Carolina. And as I have said to y'all, it doesn't really matter necessarily if they go out and hire GM before a head coach. It's just what I would prefer to see as I am of the opinion that the biggest issue in Carolina is not necessarily who the head coach is, but actually the personnel on the field. Who's going to fix personnel? And that's why I just find it hard to believe that Dan Morgan is seriously being considered for this job because he's been here the past two full off seasons. He's played a role in the signings and the scouting and the evaluation of some of the players that they brought in uh, via the draft of free agency. It just doesn't make sense to me that you would want someone who's been a part of this mess the last couple of years to then be elevated to the higher role, taking control of it. But again, David Tepper, he has far more of an understanding in what Dan Morgan's role has been here in Carolina than I have, you have, or anyone else covering the team on the outside has. But still, for me, it optically, maybe that's what it is, is just optics. That's what the sportsology deal, the whole search firm to me was optics for David Tepper, knowing that he has that reputation that he's too hands on and to try and change his process up. And I didn't hate what he did last year, casting a wide net like they've done again this year, having that many people in the organization that you can question does. And this is one of those things where people are sexist. They're like, well, a woman doesn't know anything about football, which has been proven wrong time and time again. There's plenty of women working within NFL front offices and even coaching staffs who know football better than I do and what better than you do and have forgotten more about football than you probably will ever know. But yet people are sexist. And so they believe that Nicole Tepper has no business being in there, even though she does co-own the team with her husband and that Chrissy Coleman, the team president doesn't have any business being in there, which is just ridiculous. I do like the fact that they were involved getting different perspective. I think that's important. Now, Fitter was involved in the search. So was Suleiman. So was Dan Morgan, which is another kind of knock on Dan Morgan and Samir Suleiman as candidates as they were heavily involved in bringing in uh, Frank Reich and this coaching staff. And of course, the decision that they made to draft Bryce Young, which I'm still not saying is right or wrong, but understanding how things have worked out in the current narrative out there about what CJ Stroud was able to do in Houston. I appreciated the process last year and now this year. Okay. Add a search firm, but at the end of the day, David Tepper makes these decisions. And at the end of the day, David Tepper could decide that he would rather still only have a general manager, that he doesn't want to have someone with a senior role within the organization. And it's possible that he wants it to happen organically. Look at San Francisco. They just watched Adam Peters. who was their assistant general manager leave to go to Washington. He could have stayed there in San Francisco to be the GM and to continue to build that monster, but instead he's going to go to D.C. and hopefully, for their sake, fix that franchise that was once proud before Dan Snyder bought the team. Now Josh Harris thinks he changed. But that was a situation where they could have naturally just elevated him to GM after they gave John Lynch a higher role. Possibly that's what David Tepper wants to do. He wants to hire a general manager, have the person have success, elevate him to a higher role, then bring in a new GM underneath them and have that power structure. I just feel like it's important. Just knowing how involved he is. And even if they do that, it may not stay up David Tepper in the first place. And I'm possibly being naive all about that. I just look at Disner not interviewing and withdrawing his name and wondering, does that mean the end potentially of a senior vice president being named here in Carolina? We will find out. All right. That's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On podcast network hosted by yours truly julian council again y'all subscribe or follow the show for free on youtube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast and be sure to follow me julian council on twitter at julian council where on friday i'll be back once again to answer your weekly friday mail bag of questions either at me or dm me but first follow me on julian council on twitter at julian council to get your questions in to me now but in the meantime 
Be safe, be happy, be whole as always. Keep pounding, and I'll talk to you all on Tuesday.